welcome back ladies and gents what this is is um, some willow now if you ever have a chance to get some of it and it's still green when it's been cut down take my advice leave it outside for three or four days the stuff will ooze some nasty whitish clear looking liquid out and it will make a mess where it's sitting at in your floor so please just take my advice let it sit outside willow loves moisture and it will leave slime all over your floor I decided to do a hollow form on this one since I haven't really done much with willow I did one bowl a while back but it was pretty punky and I had to dremel some of it out with um, one of my tungsten carbide bits and then fill it full of epoxy right here I'm just trying to get a good place to put a tenon on there's a bark inclusion down in the bottom right there so I'm just checking and seeing how much further I need to go in And yet again, here I am doing my CA saturation. I've saved a lot of pieces just by being overly precautious and gluing stuff. I mean, I don't know if I've saved them, but <clears throat> I haven't had anything break in quite a while. So I don't know if it's working or if I'm just wasting, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And right here I'm just going to saturate the tenon with some thin CA glue. Willow is super soft, so again, better safe than sorry. I just coat it in thin CA glue, let it wait. It digs down in and gives a better hold than just the wood wood alone because this stuff is, I mean, it, like I said, when it holds a lot of water and will ooze stuff out, it, it loves to suck up anything that you throw at it, be it oil, CA glue, dye, whatever. What I've got here is some manzanita burl shavings. I'm just filling in. There was a um, little branch that come out right there in a crack, so I just rubbed them back and forth until it kind of ground into powder and filled in those gaps. And I'm also plugging in the other holes or whatever that might be problematic. I mean, doing a hollow form out of willow, it's like I said, it's soft wood, so just be careful. Nobody likes pieces of wood exploding on the lathe. Well, I take that back. It makes for good blooper reels and gives people a good laugh as long as you don't get hurt. And yes, I'm using a full sheet of um, 80 grit sandpaper. I just, I don't know, I've always liked feeling of the final shape. Um, if it's got a high spot, I can catch it with my hand and take it back down to where it's just smooth and flush.
let me tell you, when I started applying this down there, it's just kind of one of those well, okay, you're just gonna be bright, bright red. I figured with that coloring of the wood being a little bit on the brown side that it would darken it up some. Nah. She's red. At that point it was too late. I just had to roll with it. I started to put the carbide tip back on for this one since I went with such a small hole. It was pretty nerve wracking and tough using such a big shaft and a small hole. I mean, you was constantly having to make sure that you wasn't too far this way or that way. I mean, the wrong move and you catch that rim and she's gonna let loose. That's just all there is to it. Right now I'm just checking my angle it's a good idea just to check your angles before you go dig it in because you could slip catch that rim and it's just going to completely disintegrate once you get those edges that thin What I'm doing here is just wiping it down with the Danish oil just to pop that grain out. Plus it seals the wood. Um, I mean Danish oil is a really thin urethane so you get urethane deep down inside of the wood grain and it's going to cure and harden. Makes the wood just a little bit stronger. I always hand burn my bottoms, uh, date them also that way people can look back and see how old it is and what kind of wood it was also. Here I am, I'm just showing you the wood grain. I mean this is willow but it has some interesting curls in the figure, like right there. That was a big, lot, big nice long one. Um, but for it to be willow, I mean, it was nice figure wise. And it's time to experiment yet again, which that's mostly what I do. I'm always experimenting with one thing or another on the pieces that I do. Um, this is Josanya iridescent paint. Um, you got to put the paint in and then put the flow medium that away thins it out um, stirred up real good and I mean there's tons of videos out there on YouTube on how to do it and ways that you can apply it 
but this was I was going for a marble effect which I'm going to do a piece with regular paint um, spray paint I did a helmet a while back with um, blue marbleization it would turn out just freaking beautiful and that's what I was kind of trying to do with this stuff um, at the end of the video you'll see how it turned out but it wasn't exactly like I was wanting it so that's what's made me want to do a piece like I did that helmet but this is now this was the teal that I'm applying now and this is just stretch wrap cling wrap saran wrap whatever you want to call it and just laying it on crinkling it up that way it gives it design instead of just brushed on look and here I'm applying Mylans I've used Danish oil on it and then the iridescent paint but the Mylans is going to keep the lacquer from reacting with the iridescent paint or the Danish oil it's um it's a sanding sealer but I use it as a essentially a buffer between stuff that may react and ruin the finish Here she is, the final product. You can see the little little bits of blue and teal or blue and turquoise in there um, from the iridescent paint. But anyway, hope you liked it. Share, subscribe, whatever you want to do. See ya.